All right, we're here at Marshall's in the skincare and similar to TJ Maxx, they appear to be well stocked. Plenty of cream shop masks, cute little penguin infused with moisturizing hyaluronic acid. Like I've said before, these are fun to do. I think I've tried this before actually. <laughs> the lip gold mask. Mascara Lash Serum Duo. I caution against lash serums. They can really impact the health of your lid mar eyelid margin and they can contribute to chronic dry eyes. The mascara has argan oil, so does the lash serum. Hydroxymethyl cellulose, that'll just kind of deposit on the lashes themselves and make them look thicker, but it's not actually gonna help with lash growth. It just takes time. One thing people don't realize, you gotta be have a high index of suspicion when it comes to claims about lash serums working because alopecia areata is an autoimmune hair loss. Sudden loss of hair, you get bald patches that can affect the scalp, it can affect the beard area, the eyebrows, and it also can affect the eyelashes. The, the lashes will regrow eventually in most cases, but it just takes a very long time, like over two years. So when somebody says, my lashes have been sparse for years, and this lash serum is the only thing that made them grow back. You have to question, is that just the natural history of your eyelash loss? Probably, it has nothing to do with the serum. These are like all the trend. Everywhere I have gone, there's been some kind of gel eye patch. These are rainbow, that's cute. I like the donut and pizza ones from the other, and TJ Maxx was it? I have some makeup palettes here. Cure Radiance Facial Cleansing System. These appear to be going nowhere, these facial cleansing brushes. I don't recommend them because it can end up causing a lot of irritation. Although this one has a silicone head, those tend to be a lot gentler. Seriously, just use your finger pads. Ooh, Hemp's Yuzu and Starfruit Sunless. Oh, this is a sunless tanner. Dihydroxyacetone is the active ingredient in all sunless tanners. It's more than safe. It can be a little irritating, it can be drying. A heck of a lot safer than a UV tan. Oh look, it's the donut jellies again. Donut gel iPad, the donut pizza combo has made its way over here to Marshall's. This one's a uh, self-care and chill. And then we have watermelons, those are cute. Little pineapples. If you have seasonal allergies like myself, you know when your eyes get flared up, Cool, some cool patches can be really helpful. Whoa, what is this pump of retinol? This looks promising. Cruelty free, it has green tea in it. No fragrance, retinol. Obviously you guys know, boosts up collagen production in the deeper layers of the skin. Now I can't speak to the efficacy of Nuventin's retinol. Never heard of this brand before. I don't know, like is it stable? Have they done any testing on it to show that it actually gets into the skin? And, um, activates gene transcription, <laughs> subsequent collagen boosting. Anyways, um, it is what it is. What, what, is, what are they? Five ninety nine. Hmm. Not too bad. And retinol body creams can potentially help improve the appearance of stretch marks. Likewise, a hyaluronic acid moisturizer can too. Borage seed oil is a good emollient. Oh, this one does have fragrance. It also has ceramides, which are good for the moisture barrier. What I was saying is hyaluronic acid and retinol and moisture, body moisturizers may help improve the look of stretch marks, studies would suggest. Um, but you gotta use, start using it early on in stretch mark formation for it to really work. Advanced Clinicals, CoQ10, Wrinkle Defense Cream. I like this brand. They have a retinol body cream that's pretty good. CoQ10, aka ubiquinone, helps to reduce oxidative stress in the skin that damages DNA in your skin cells and contributes to aging, destruction of collagen. And it actually can get into the skin and do those things. Clinically tested, they claim, whatever that means. This one does have fragrance. Likewise, it's got that green tea in it, which can help also fight off free radical damage. And it looks like it has a, some peptides, which can help improve moisture retention, may potentially get into the skin and boost up collagen production. You an electric toothbrush. 
Let's remove plaque. Oh, it's the simple micellar facial gel wash. Ew, there's something sticky here. I hate it when that happens. Um, I love this and I think they've discontinued it. It's a really good face, face cleanser. I love it. What's this one? The purifying facial wash. Move out of the way, Pacifica. The purifying one, it's this one, the water boost one is, is fragrance free. It's really good. It's really gentle yet effective. This has panthenol, which is good for the moisture barrier, niacinamide. This looks like a decent one as well. Something sticky here. It looks like one of the cleansers leaked. Precision Beauty's Ultra Hydrating Hyaluronic Acid Peel-Off Mask. The peel-off masks, oops, jumped off there. They've got this shelf packed. The peel-off masks, I don't recommend. They can be pretty irritating. It's kind of like taking rubber cement. Just kind of pulls off some of the top dead shedding skin cells. Hyaluronic Foam Cleanser. This is a Korean brand. Korean brands, they have these foaming cleansers and they often have soap berry in it, which really does generate a lot of lather. I'm not seeing that here though. Now, putting retinol in cleansers, it's got to stop in body washes like um, <coughs> Olay, uh, Glam Fox, retinol and collagen. Looks like Advanced Clinicals has a vitamin C and ferulic acid face mist. It does have fragrance. This one has a scorbyl phosphate, a stable form of a vitamin C. Um, but that form of vitamin C hasn't really been shown to actually get in the skin and be converted to ascorbic acid to then have the effects of boosting up collagen production. Hmm. Tea tree oil and retinol facial cleanser. Again, with putting retinol in cleansers, like it's just not necessary. But I can't imagine that retinol would actually stay behind on your skin in a cleanser. What are these vitamin C capsules by Dr. Wellness? Is this something you eat or put on your skin? This is a scorbyl tetraisopalmitate, another form of vitamin C that's not been shown to really do anything yet. Expert Solutions Superfood All Day Cleanser. This is a spirulina. Ooh, almost dropped it. Spirulina face wash with tea and fragrance. Looks like it'd be difficult to get out. It's this deep puffing eye serum from Exuviance. I was hoping this had caffeine in it, which can temporarily reduce. Oh yeah, it does. It has caffeine, an antioxidant that can temporarily reduce the look of dark under eye circles and help with uh, puffiness. And then sodium hyaluronate can help smooth out wrinkles and fine lines. It also has peptides in it. I mean, you don't really need an eye cream, but that actually looks promising. This is Saturday Skin 10% glycolic. Is that what that says? Hidden there? Glycolic acid toner. It has tea tree in it, which you guys know from my vids can be irritating. And a bunch of essential oils. Yeah, let's skip this. Looks like misery. Oh. Kathy Bates, anyone? I have a Manuka Honey Night Cream. Now, honey is rich in humectants, antioxidants, and it has antibacterial, antimicrobial properties. So in theory, you know, it may be helpful for acne. I mean, it's not like there are any randomized controlled trials on putting honey on your face for acne. Anyways. Uh, what else does this have? Oh, unfortunately it does have fragrance, which can be irritating. It's got marula seed oil, which is full of uh, antioxidants, depending on the time of the year and month and, and how it was processed, etc. It may or may not have tons of antioxidants. It also has jojoba oil. Too bad this has fragrance because it otherwise has some good looking ingredients in it. Oh look, Olay. <laughs> You cannot escape Olay, I swear. You could go into the desert on a horse with no name and Olay would pop out. Here's another vitamin C and caffeine eye cream. Laden with essential oils. I would not recommend that one. With the Exuviance one we were looking at earlier, that one looked more promising. Although what's their cooling eye gel? Cucumber and hyaluronic acid. This one looks better. I'm not seeing essential oils. This one has peptides which can help improve moisture retention. Simple age resisting day cream SPF 15. Now the way people put SPF on, sunscreen on, they're never gonna get to SPF 15. They're gonna get more like an SPF of two. That's not to say that this is bad per se, it's just not likely going to be enough. I'm guessing a chemical sunscreen. I thought, yeah, a chemical sunscreen. Looks like I've got Kate Somerville's exfoliate glow in a grenade here. <laughs> Is this one of those things that leaks ink all over you when, if you try and steal it? I always thought those were brilliant. 
you literally could get caught red-handed. <laughs> Uh, this is a fragrance containing alpha hydroxy acid product, moisturizer, cream, paste, something along those lines. I would not get that. Uh, how did I miss this? Norwegian formula in a body mist. This is a moisturizer from Neutrogena. Um, but this, I've never seen this one in store before. I love the Norwegian formula hand cream. It's delightful. Uh, this one has fragrance, unfortunately. You know, this was a trend a few years ago, and I mean, they're still putting them out, but consumers are less impressed by these moisturizing sprays. Some people really like them because they find they're easier to put on, but like, you still have to rub them in, so I don't know. Oh, it's the Paracone Calming and Soothing CBD Collection. CBD is still everywhere in skincare products, but consumers seem less impressed than they were initially. CBD in skincare products may help reduce itch. There's some compelling in, uh, data that it may help with acne and eczema, but more studies are needed. And then you guys know like skincare products, they're non-drug cosmetics. So who knows the quality of the CBD and all of that kind of stuff. Um, anyways, it's everywhere. What's her name? Kristen Bell is launching a CBD moisturizer that everybody is tap dancing in bliss over and then they'll promptly forget about when the next celebrity farts out whatever cream du jour they've decided their marketing team thinks is a good idea. Anyways, this is Basha. I haven't heard much about Basha in a while. This was all the rage a few years ago. Basha this, Basha that. I'm sure it still has a loyal following, but um, I don't get asked about Basha much. Maybe because people know I think most of their products are nothing but fragrance, including this hydration gel. I see a red gel and I want it painted black. First Aid Beauty, I don't know. You know, they sold out. They're no longer cruelty free. I predict they're gonna fizzle out. They've changed the formulations of a lot of their products. I've heard from you guys, especially. Um, what is this? Sandalwood is a common irritant allergen. Too, too bad. Oil mat free mattifying gel. I think I reviewed this in an Ulta once or just checked it out. This actually looked pretty promising. Ceramides, licorice root. Their hydrating oat toner is really good. This ultra repair tinted moisturizer. Is this the one I tried? No, I'm thinking of I have a tinted sunscreen that has this weird gritty sensation and I tried contacting them and asking them what was up with that and they kind of ignored me. This is pretty good. I've used this before. The Oat and Hemp Multifix Salve. I vote for calling more things salves. Oops. Salves. I always like that name. Salve. Sounds better than a night mask. Oh. The Aztec Secret Clay is here as well. You know that? I have a video on that. People are always into making a uh, clay mask, which is good for absorbing oiliness, uh, removing sebum off the surface of the skin from within the pore. That can help with acne breakouts. This is a headband that I have for my skincare. This is Vintage Cosmetics. I get them on iHerb. I really like them. They're as cold as ice. Aloe vera soothing gel. Aloe vera is full of, is humectant rich, so it helps impart moisture into the skin. It's also got a ton of anti-inflammatory compounds, antioxidants that can help with healing. Unfortunately, if you take the gel from the straight up plant, it uh, can cause some irritation and people can have allergy to it. I always suggest using skincare products with it, with it to reduce that. Unfortunately, most skincare products have fragrance or drying alcohols that end up negating the humectant properties. So it's kind of that, you know, you're going around in circles with it. Yes, it can be helpful, but Anyways, the other benefit of aloe is that it's got allicins in it, which help with hyperpigmentation. They're well spread. The Beauty Chef. I feel like people were pushing this all over social media. It's some kind of dietary supplement. Peppermint leaf oil. It's just going to help with breath. What, what is the... Oh, biotin. Oh, you guys know biotin has not been shown to really be helpful for hair growth unless you have biotin deficiency. Can cause acne breakouts and uh, can interfere with the accuracy of blood tests like thyroid. So if you are taking biotin, you want to stop taking it a few weeks before getting blood work uh, so that that doesn't happen. Uh, hemp's 
uh, I tried a hemp's moisturizer recently, you guys, based on everybody's recommendation. And I have to agree, it, it, they're nice moisturizers, but the scent I got reminded me of Bubblicious gum. And I can't imagine that the maple buttercream, maybe that's good. Let me know. Oh, I love this product. This glittery one, I don't recommend it because it's got glitter in it and fragrance, but it's really nice. The um, copper tone is tinted, so the tint, the iron oxides, can offer some protection against pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. Yeah, I, I wish they didn't put fragrance in it because it is, it is pretty good, I have to say. Collagen Anti-Aging Facial Serum. Collagen is helpful in skincare products as a humectant. I mean, if you see it, don't like get excited about it. It's not, I mean, it'll be helpful, but it's not like something noteworthy in comparison to any other humectant like beta-glucan or trehalose, which this also has, or sodium hyaluronate, the salt of hyaluronic acid. This also has urea in it, which is good for the moisture barrier. Does this have fragrance in it? I'm not seeing fragrance. This looks good. Azure. 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 Collagen and vitamin E anti-aging facial serum. This is something that you would want to put on underneath the moisturizer though. It doesn't look like it's got anything occlusive in it. So all these humectants, they'll help pull hot water into the top dead layer of the skin, temporarily improving the look of wrinkles and fine lines. But if you don't put a moisturizer on over it, then all that water will slowly evaporate out and end up drying out your skin more. That's one of the things that you actually can run into if you use aloe vera gel as a moisturizer is the same thing because there isn't really you know aloe vera gel doesn't have like shea butter in it or dimethicone so all that hydration that gets pulled on the top layer of the skin it's just going to evaporate that can end up being more irritating all right what is their retinol anti-aging facial serum witch hazel is an astringent some people can be allergic to it but otherwise this looks promising i'm not saying retinol though they claim it oh there it is retinol and ascorbic acid. Hmm. No state, nothing in here. Well, tocopherol will help with ascorbic acid stability. Both ascorbic acid and tocopherol, they're antioxidants, and they kind of piggyback off of one another. They help stabilize one another and help tell your skin, hey, make more of us, please. But unfortunately, ascorbic acid is really unstable. It's difficult to formulate. It oxidizes, stains the skin orange. But look, we have okay. Black Jamaican castor oil. Castor oil, ricinoleic acid, very, very moisturizing, but it does not impact the hair growth cycle. By nature, purifying, pore refining, exfoliating facial scrub. This has pink clay in it. That's gonna help pull off some excess sebum from the surface of the skin and from within the pore. That'll help with acne control. Oh, but it does have fragrance in it. And whenever you see scrub, there's probably some sand in there or something I want you to grit away at your face with. Speaking of sleep mask, Tree Hut has an overnight miracle, it's promising. Pillow proof formula for baby, oh this is for your hair. Huh. I might like to try that. Sweet almond oil, argan oil, and a bunch of fragrance. Ooh, speaking of aloe vera, we have from Nature Aloe Vera Moisture Soothing Cream. This one has fragrance in it too. Hemp's is promising way too much here. And mini age-defying renewing herbal body wash. Body wash is not going to defy aging. It's not humanly, biologically possible. If you believe in magic, in a young girl's heart, the music, okay, um, then maybe, but <laughs> trust me, I'm here to tell you guys I'm here to tell you that soap does not defy aging. Body and foot scrub with Himalayan pink sea salt and lavender. With walnut exfoliants. What are they competing with? Uh, St. Ives? If you have something like this, just use it on your feet where the stratum corneum is so thick it's not bothered. But elsewhere, it can be really irritating. Ooh, I almost missed these. Y'all know I enjoy these under eye pads. And this Azure brand is is not disappointing with their ingredients selection. Fine lines, wrinkles, these are just fun to help deep off the relaxing. Oh, they put fragrance in this one, bummer. Highly recommend the Good Molecules ones or the Derma E ones. Although well, the Derma E ones sell out pretty quickly, but the Good Molecules ones are also really good. What is in this? 
Mango Nectar and Hype. Oh, this is another body wash, but they're not promising um, magic in this one. It's just limited edition, which sells itself in it oftentimes. The promise, this one says limited edition too. The scarcity marketing. Scarcity marketing explains why I have like over a hundred Beanie Babies. Comment below if you remember the Beanie Baby craze where they were like, oh yeah, these are gonna go away and they're gonna be limited edition collector's items and they're gonna be worth bazillions. Yeah, they're all worth like four dollars. Ew, how did I miss this? Perfect Galactomyces Firming Skin Toner made in Japan. Galactomyces Ferment has a lot of antioxidants and humectants. This also has peptides in it. Oh, and snail. Snail is good for healing and aloe. All right, this looks pretty good. Can't say is there's anything problematic about it. It does have alcohol denaturant, not a demon ingredient. Helps stabilize ingredients can be drying though what is this this is just promising an ethos here cellular renewal human biology anti oh grown alchemist and last i checked they put yeah you know, essential oils in their products alginist is another one of those buy me buy me buy me brands but i'm nothing but fragrance typically overpriced and they fart out new products all the time and as the uh, as the stale farts dwindle they end up here so that's, that's the quick and dirty rundown on Alginist. What is this Lanolin Original Face Cream? Lanolin is from Sheep's Fleece. It's very moisturizing um, but you can become allergic to it. FYI. Verb. Is this the same company that makes these energy bars I like? I don't think so. Born in Austin. C texture cream. Is this for hair? Sounds like it. Is it just me or has Marshalls and TJ Maxx gotten exponentially better in terms of their skincare stock? They've been doing a really good job keeping a well-stocked inventory in the store like in tight ship order. Are y'all's Marshalls, TJ Maxx, Home Goods this this uh up to snuff or are we just killing it here in h-town <laughs> anyways guys i hope you all enjoyed this shop with me video on the next slide will be my last skincare shop with me video if you enjoy these but if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and as always don't forget sunscreen and subscribe i'll talk to you guys tomorrow bye <laughs>